Good evening. Today we're going to install the OBS MIDI plugin. So the first thing you do is you go to obsproject.com, click download. It will download the software for you. Uh, you click on the icon. You hit yes when the desk it, it's allowed to make changes. You next, next, next through everything. And then hit finish when you get to that screen. I would have shown it except it has issues uh, showing that off uh, or it has issues installing OBS while Streamlabs OBS is running. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the OBS-MIDI plugin. I will link it in the uh, description below. Uh, but you can go to github.com slash lz, A-L-Z-Y, slash OBS dash MIDI slash releases. The current release as of the time of this video is 0.2.0. .0. Uh, I just put this release out today. We're going to go down to the bottom of that release, click assets, and download the zip folder. Okay. Once we have downloaded the zip folder, we open that up and you'll be presented with these files. Install.txt tells you what to do. Install on Windows, copy these files into your OBS plugins directory. Default directory is here. So what we do is we're going to highlight all three of those, right click and copy. And then we are going to go to this PC, C, Program Files. OBS Studio, OBS-Plugins, 64-bit, then we are going to right-click and click Paste. We're going to click Do for all current items and hit Continue. We have now installed the plugin. So when you go and to your Start menu, you can now click on OBS Studio, OBS Studio will start loading up. Looks like there's a scan, and now it gives you this screen here. Now you won't have any scenes if you haven't set scenes up. Uh, I have. I have also uh, set up my MIDI controller, but I'm going to remove that so you can see what it's like uh, when you're first coming in here. So uh, since I've got stuff set up, you can see it's all like this. Um, if I, for example, click here, that's what I have mapped to mute mic slash auxiliary. I can do the same with desktop audio. I can change the volumes, as you can see here. And if I change them in OBS, you can see on my controller, they also change. Same thing happens with different scenes. Depending on which scene I click on, you can see that I'm switching back and forth between different scenes over here. I don't have any of the scenes set up because this is just a demo. But uh, one of the things you might have noticed is uh, when I click on this fader, mic aux jumps between high and low. And the reason behind that is because uh, this fader is set up as a uh, touch, it's a touch sensitive fader. Uh, I accidentally have this touch sensitive fader right here. So I can click on it, hit delete row, and it removes that. Alright, now we just hit save, and you'll notice that that no longer happens. And we can now set things, and so on and so forth. So let's say, for example, I want to start streaming uh, and I want to configure, uh, let's say, this button right here to start streaming. How do we do that? How do we add a button in? Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come all the way to the bottom of the list and we're going to click on the button. And you'll notice that a new button, 39, just appeared. And in 39, we get the option. Uh, it's an action type button. And we get a bunch of options uh, available to us. So let's say we want to use it to start streaming. And uh, let's say that on note off, when the button is dark, we want it to stop streaming. 
All right, we do those. We hit save, close. Now when I hit this button, watch right here. Connecting, and we're now streaming. We are currently live up on Twitch. Hit the button again, and it automatically stops streaming. We can also do that for start recording, and so on and so forth. Uh, the list of all the available options is right here. Uh, sorry, right here. Uh, we currently have set current scene, set preview scene, toggle mute, or set mute. Uh, start slash stop streaming, so I could have chosen that one if I wanted to just use the button as a toggle. Uh, basically, it's toggle streaming. Start streaming, stop streaming, in case I want to ha have them attached to two different buttons. Same with recording. Start, stop recording, start recording, stop recording. We can also start, stop the replay buffer, start, stop the replay buffer. We can pause recording, resume recording. Um, and that's what the current active actions we have are. Uh, the only ones that have feedback at the moment are setting volume, which you didn't see how that happens. So in here, if we toggle a control change, it's not in use. Uh, you'll you might have seen that jump a bit. You'll notice we now have three different entries. 103 is a touch sensitivity one. So we're going to delete that. 102 is a touch sensitivity one. And 3 is because this is the third fader and that's how my board has them set up. So in here you'll notice the action type is actually fader. And it should be. It looks like there's a little bug. So in fader. You get one option at the moment. There will be more coming, uh, which is set volume. And then you can choose between your different volume sources. Uh, let's leave this to desktop audio for a second. You'll see a nifty little feature. If you map two things to one, uh, you'll notice. Ah, oh, look at that. Ah, I am filtering out some of the messages when we send movements. So not all the messages will go through. That's why you see a little bit of a jump there. Um, the, oh, if I want to say add a media source, we're gonna add a media source, click okay. When we go in here to tools, if we go back down to the set volume, option we now have media source as well so now we can set the volume you'll notice here's a new volume slider we can now set the volume for media source uh, so if we're going to have a piece of video that plays back we can we can adjust the volume of that as needed and for now that's the basics of how you go about setting stuff up um uh quick rundown on changing scenes uh let's set a button we've got them down here now uh we go to action set current scene we choose the scene that we want and bada boom bada bang i tend to set both note on and note off for that button you can see here's the uh note or control value uh which is the uh, in combination with the channel and the note or control, those two numbers make up uh, the address for that button. So button 36 on channel 1, uh, I will normally set the note on and off for the, each of those to the same thing um, when it comes to switching scenes. Uh, if you don't do that, then what you'll end up finding is that you'll have to often hit the button twice uh, to get it to uh, to get it to actually uh, change the scene which is not what you want uh, interesting thing though is if you wanted to switch back and forth between two different uh, versions of uh, scene you could do that by setting say uh, in-game and in-game no camera but since we had it set to just chatting, we'll set it to just chatting, and we can now 
click on the button and you'll see we get just chatting we get another one so on and so forth and you can see them moving around brb just chatting ending just chatting and you'll notice you don't really get any difference except for these lights are going on and off uh, because those are actually mapped to the same function so that's uh, way longer than I expected but uh, there's 10 minutes in how to set up OBS dash MIDI how to install it how to get using it uh, if you add a different MIDI controller to your device it'll show up in the list on the left um, it'll show up here in this devices list on the left uh, all the available outputs will show up right here uh, you should choose your output when you uh, uh, set up your device and don't forget to enable it and so on and so forth so have a good day and uh, bye bye